Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. And by Yamaha Motor Canada. What kind of Yamaha are you? Unless you've been around for a while, you're going to find this historical feature on Polaris ATVs a little shocking. Why? When Polaris ATVs first hit the ground in 1985, they were both praised and maligned for almost exactly the same reasons. Here's the deal. The very first Polaris ATVs came with CVTs, belt drive snowmobile transmissions. In as much as today we think of CVTs as the ATV transmission of choice, back in 1985, some corners of the industry laughed at Polaris's use of a belt drive tranny. In fact, Polaris' use of single lever brakes, now an industry standard, along with full floorboards and high and low range were also dissed by a market predisposed with shifting gears, muddy feet, and seized brake levers. To say Polaris has innovated in the ATV business would be like saying Henry Ford changed the horse-drawn carriage. Polaris literally redefined the four-wheeled ATV when they entered the business in 1985, and they did this without any prior equity in this industry. Some would say Polaris was cocky, or maybe crazy to have entered the four-wheeler biz in 1985 with no previous credentials in the off-road industry. For them to reinvent the way an ATV worked, rode, and performed, well, that was just laughable. History is a great teacher, and here's the lesson Polaris taught the ATV industry. Many of the innovative features Polaris brought to the table then are now standard features every competitor offers in model year 2012 ATVs. A particular innovation of note is Polaris's demand drive true four-wheel drive. Before Polaris arrived in the industry, everyone used an open front differential to deliver 4x4. This meant the best you could expect was three-wheel drive on slippery surfaces. Polaris's demand drive system monitored rotational speeds of both front wheels. When they differed by more than 5%, both locked up solid, giving true 4x4. This changed the way 4x4 was perceived in the ATV industry. Imitation is the highest form of flattery, and in Polaris' case, they've continually been copied. Floorboards are now an industry standard. True 4x4, or at the least, electric locking differentials are everywhere. Single lever brakes are standard on more than 50% of all competitive ATVs, while twin cylinder power is another Polaris innovation that's been copied over the past two decades. Before Polaris began their stratospheric rise to number one in the ATV business, there are a number of models we think you'll find interesting, if not somewhat intriguing. Let's begin with the granddaddy of them all, the Polaris Trail Boss 250 2x4. In 1985, Polaris landed their first four-wheeler powered by a simple piston port, oil-injected 250cc two-stroke engine. The unusual-looking Trail Boss used chain drive when the Japanese were bringing shaft drive to the market. However, the Trail Boss introduced the ATV market to fully automatic CVT riding and single lever braking, both staples of the modern snowmobile today. Polaris gambled huge here, but their convictions told them these two features would make riding an ATV easier, safer, and more fun. The gamble didn't just work, it went over huge. ATVers immediately identified Polaris as those ATVs with automatic transmissions. However, the company needed to prove that the transmission could handle more power and take abuse. They wasted no time introducing their next model, the Trail Boss 250 4x4, an ATV which I own personally in the 1980s. The Trail Boss 250 4x4 introduced true 4x4 to the market, and again, buyers were impressed with its ability to navigate mud. However, the little 250 two stroke was pretty much at its limit from a power perspective when 4x4 was added into the equation. As well, the complete system drove the wheels through a dizzying series of three drive chains, something the competition immediately picked on. True to Polaris's innovative style, 
In 1991, the company inserted what was among the most powerful engines ever used to propel a sport utility ATV, a full-on liquid-cooled 350cc two-stroke reed valve inducted single. This engine was shockingly strong and propelled the Trail Boss 350L and 350L 4x4 to new levels of respect within the industry. Throughout the 90s, buyers were increasingly convinced by the reliable performance of Polaris CVT transmissions and the effectiveness of demand drive true 4x4. While other makers resisted the move to CVT transmissions, Polaris relished the lack of attention the competition was giving their innovations. After all, Polaris was just a little Minnesota snowmobile manufacturer way up on the Canadian border. How could they redefine the modern ATV? In 1995, Polaris broke a new segment with the arrival of the 400cc liquid-cooled two-stroke powered Scrambler 4x4. This was the first crossover ATV and arrived well ahead of the now well-accepted Can-Am Renegade series. The Scrambler 4x4 enjoyed immediate acceptance with a new group of high-performance 4x4 buyers. In 1996, Polaris introduced their first four-stroke powered ATV, the Sportsman 500. We've already said this vehicle changed the game for Polaris. However, the Sportsman changed the entire ATV industry. It came with so many features no other ATV possessed, buyers literally lined up for two years in an effort to get a Sportsman. A 500cc engine, at this time in history, was considered huge, and the new Sportsman broke new ground for Polaris with beautifully integrated bodywork, including the industry's first floorboards and racks made from composite plastic. Polaris knew they hit the sweet spot with the arrival of the Sportsman 500 four-stroke with IRS. From this point on, the company moved to more four-stroke power and away from chain drive. The Sportsman was the company's arrival in the mainstream, the big times, and the competition noticed and they copied. If a 500 four-stroke single in the Sportsman chassis was good, then why not insert a 700cc narrow profile twin in the same package? In 2001, Polaris did just that, and the Sportsman genre was elevated again. The world's first twin cylinder sport utility ATV was available with all of those now known and accepted features like true 4x4, CVT auto transmission, floorboards, composite racks, and single lever brakes. With seven ATV OEMs building ATVs by the middle of the last decade, Polaris was now among the top three best sellers, and the company was busy expanding their ability to produce more ATVs, particularly sportsman ATVs. Just when the market was maligning Polaris for delivering the insanely powerful 700cc sportsman twin, Polaris decided to slap the market right up alongside the head. If 700cc sold in a Sportsman, then 800 would be even better, wouldn't it? Clearly, Polaris was right, and the rest is now history. The intro of the dual-pipe 800 Sportsman took power and performance from a sport utility ATV to an incredible new height. The new EFI 800 Twin was a firecracker. The prestige of owning the world's most powerful 4x4 ATV drove hordes of buyers to Polaris showrooms across North America. In 2005, Polaris moved their ATV business into a completely new area. The company had been working with the U.S. National Department of Defense to develop the first ever purpose-built military spec ATV, the 700 twin-powered MV. The lucrative work of developing military spec ATVs and side-by-sides continues until this day and is the envy of Polaris competitors. By 2006, Polaris was innovating again, producing a variant of their successful sportsman touring chassis called the X2. This versatile model provided a dump box out back, which magically morphed into a two-up seat. The X2 introduced an unlocking differential for the rear wheels, allowing the vehicle to navigate turf without damage. Late last decade, the pure sport market ignited, and Polaris came to the party with an exceptionally innovative high-performance model, powered by a KTM 525cc engine. And wouldn't you know it, this model featured independent rear suspension. 
Polaris, never content to be a Me Too ATV company, proved they knew how to make a high-performance ATV with the arrival of the Outlaw 525 IRS. No matter what your brand loyalties, it's impossible to deny the fact Polaris has been not only innovative, but successfully innovative since they entered the market with the lowly, funky, unconventional Trail Boss 250 over 25 years ago. If innovation wins the award, Polaris is a huge winner. However, we think it goes this way. By pursuing what they believed would improve the riding experience, the company has enjoyed incredible innovation success. In fact, we cannot name another ATV maker who has brought as many innovations to the market. Polaris has literally defined the modern ATV since they arrived in this business. So what's their reward? They build the number one selling ATVs and side-by-sides in the world. Few side-by-sides have been met with as much anticipation as Arctic Cat's all-new Wildcat when it was introduced last season. But you know what they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well that's shame on me, isn't it? Even though the Wildcat far exceeded our expectations at the new product intro in Barstow, California, I'm no fool. So I secretly reserved my final judgment until I got some real seat time in this baby, both on my own turf and out in real world side-by-side -side terrain. Now it's time to pull the gloves off and get real honest about my thoughts on Articat's all new flagship side-by-side. -side. This is not the time to pull any punches, just the truth if you think you can handle it. We were promised long travel, and long travel is what we got. Probably the most obvious trait of the Wildcat is its suspension setup that's not the least bit concealed with bodywork. Double A arms up front yield an almost unbelievable 17 inches of travel, and they're damped by a set of Walker Evans fully adjustable piggyback shocks that look like they were pretty much swiped right off Robbie Gordon's trophy truck. Out back, an even more impressive five-link trailing arm design provides 18 inches of travel, also damped by the same shocks as what's up front. The five-link rear end is striking in its appearance and often leads to the question, why? Simply put, a five-link trailing arm setup is strong, and it helps keep the tire flat as it cycles through travel this long. It also reduces axle plunge and camber, which can both lead to increased drive shaft failure when you're running really hard. With 17 and 18 inches of travel on tap, the Wildcat can soak up unbelievable terrain without even flinching. Whoops and ruts that toss its competition around like a ragdoll barely upset the Wildcat, and landings that send drivers straight to their local chiropractor and competitive vehicles feel soft and pillowy. Now that any doubts about whether or not this vehicle handles and rides amazing are fully quelled, Let's move on to power. The 951cc single overhead cam four valve EFI mill found in the Wildcat is exactly the same as the motor found in the Prowler XTZ models. But because the Wildcat has the word wild in its name, more power was obviously needed. 50 millimeter throttle bodies, ceramic coated exhaust, and a high flow intake system bumped the output to a mildly disappointing 77 horsepower. The gnarly growl from the intake and thumping cadence from the exhaust heard while mashing the Wildcat's fun pedal all the way to the floor can be somewhat misleading. And that's really the only complaint we have with this vehicle at all. The Wildcat certainly doesn't feel slow, but what it does lack in power, it fully makes up for in other ways. For instance, the Wildcat is the first pure sport side-by-side -side to come standard with power steering. One lap on a track, one mile on the rocks, or one afternoon on the trail will make it crystal clear. Power steering rules. The Wildcat requires so much less effort to keep under control and keep straight. The wheel never gets kicked out of your hands and you don't feel like you have to hold on with a death grip, making the Wildcat more relaxing and more confidence inspiring to drive. The rest of the vehicle is adorned with features that will convince the wife you really did get a great deal, honey. Slick looking aluminum wheels, integrated doors with lower nets, decent digital gauge package, and slick LED accent lighting all give the Wildcat an already customized feel. High back bucket seats, a tilting wheel, 
locking front diff and a high-low transmission give you the ability to tailor the Wildcat to suit any driver and any driving situation. From motocross tracks to trail riding to rock crawling, the Wildcat can truly do it all and do it well with little to no modifications needed. And we can't argue with that. Everyone who drives or rides in the Wildcat absolutely loves it. It's a hit, it's a winner, it's exceeded our expectations, it's never let us down, and with a little more horsepower, it would give us absolutely nothing to complain about. Not bad for its first year in production. One very real problem that I run into on almost a weekly basis is something that has very little to do with your actual ATV itself and a lot more to do with the space required to haul your ATV along with all of that associated gear that goes with recreational off-road riding. The fact is, if you put your ATV or side-by-side -side in the box of your truck, you've extinguished most of the available room for gear, fuel cans, and anything else you might want to keep safe and dry under a tonneau cover. On the flip side, hooking up a trailer means you don't fit in most parking spots, use more fuel, and have the hassle of hooking up, disconnecting, and maneuvering before you even get to ride. While we do love the ability to haul four or five ATVs in a large enclosed trailer, if you're looking to haul one or two, I've got the perfect solution. Attempting to drive your ATV on top of a traditional hard or soft tonneau cover would result in disaster and mockery, and large extending truck decks make your truck look awkward and bulky but a Diamondback cover? Well, that's a whole different story. A Diamondback truck cover operates much like a standard tonneau cover, where it installs quickly and simply with traditional box rail clamps. No center supports, no technical tensioning systems, and still allows you quick and easy access to your gear at the front and rear of the box, thanks to its handy three-piece design, which allows you to open the front or rear third of the cover with hydraulic struts. The cover I'm installing today is called a Diamondback HD. Now Diamondback does make covers from light gauge aluminum all the way up to the heaviest duty, the HD, that'll carry a whopping 1,600 pounds, or in our case, two full-size ATVs. The HD cover is not just well-built, it's precision engineered, with hauling ATVs in mind. Traditionally, Diamondback covers were offered in chrome checker plate aluminum. However, a second black option features the Line-X premium coating that's incredibly durable, UV-stable, and holds its semi-gloss look for years. We also appreciate the extra grip the textured Line-X coating offers for wet or muddy days. I often get asked how you load an ATV onto a Diamondback cover. And you know what? That's a great question, because the streamlined design of the Diamondback shows no signs of how you do this. And the truth is, the process is as simple and foolproof as the cover itself. When you order the ATV package for your Diamondback HD, a beautiful set of arched aluminum folding ATV ramps are included and seamlessly lock into the perimeter tube mounts on the cover, meaning your ramps are staying put. Add to this a three inch sidewall on both the inside and outside of the ramps and you have the most stable and confidence inspiring loading system I have ever used. It's strong enough for a side by side and easy enough for anyone to use. For me, the two key benefits of the Diamondback HD truck cover are storage capacity and safety, both things that you need to think about every time you travel with your truck and ATVs. Our Dirt Tracks truck features an eight foot box and when equipped with a Diamondback cover can handily hold two ATVs or one side by side while still allowing me to fill the box of the truck with all my associated ATV gear, meaning I can take everything I need for most any ATV trip, including the ATVs with nothing more than my truck. Got a short box? That's no problem, as Diamondback has applications for all truck box sizes and even sells a special extension so short box owners can still carry two ATVs. Possibly the most important feature on the Diamondback HD cover is security from the weather elements and protection from thieves, who we all know are not deterred by vinyl tonneau covers. Utilizing deadbolt style steel locking rods securing under the box rails, the Diamondback cover would require more hardware than any thief could ever carry to get into this fortress. And for me, that's invaluable. On the flip side, Mother Nature can try her best to infiltrate, but the industrial rubber seals on all lids and rails ensures a watertight fit so your gear is always dry and safe. At the end of the day, there truly is no compromises with this design. Over the years, I've seen a lot of different ways to transport an ATV. 
from flat deck conversions to hydraulic truck ramps, but none of them are as easy to use and simple to install as the Diamondback. This truly is one product that will revolutionize the way you transport your ATV. Can't get enough of Dirt Tracks television? Log on to DirtTracksTV.com to watch all your favorite episodes and visit our Facebook page to share your thoughts with other fans of Dirt Tracks. Dirt Tracks television has been sponsored by Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat, share our passion.